What's going on everyone? Thanks for tuning in on today's episode of Knife Talk. As you can tell by the thumbnail, we're going to be talking about the ZT0990. Now, before we get started, I did want to mention something. I am going to be selling this knife. It'll be up for sale by the time this video is posted. I'll be selling it for $220 shipped, excluding Alaska and Hawaii and I'll only be taking payments in Venmo or Zelle. If you want to contact me, you can contact me through Instagram. I'll make sure to put my Instagram down for you guys. That way you can get a hold of me. And also, if you live in the North Austin area, you can also do a local pickup. Just hit me up and I can get this knife to you. So I hope this knife goes to a good home and let's get on with the video. So I wanted to put up the specs on the screen for you. Make sure to pause it if you want to read into that. One thing I wanted to mention before we get started too was the pricing. So pricing on this guy hasn't changed too much since I bought it last year. Back in 2023, I bought it for $250 and it's currently going on Blade HQ and Knife Center for $264. So still a pretty good price. So yeah, let's go ahead and get on with the unboxing. All right guys, so here's the unboxing of the knife real quick. It does come in an updated packaging compared to the previous box. I don't know if ZT changed their logo or not, but it now says experience it. And it has premium performance and premium materials on the box. So it's pretty straightforward. I'll show you guys what the old box looked like. So. This is the old box, it says Go Bold, proudly overbuilt in the USA, a real beast, proudly overbuilt in the USA. So I feel like this was a more aggressive packaging, which I liked compared to the now more subtle look, kind of the same way ZT's been going for years now, which is unfortunate, but anyways, let's get on with the unboxing. It's pretty straightforward. There's really not much in this box. You open it up, it says experience it. And you have your knife and your owner's manual. So make sure to look through that, read through that. ZT does come with a lifetime knife sharpening warranty. So make sure to read that pamphlet for more information on it. And you get your knife in this lovely bubble wrap that I hate. I wish ZT would put some type of pouch or better packaging along with their knives. I feel like if you're paying $250 and up for a knife, the last thing you want to see it in is bubble wrap. The first thing I wanted to talk about was the blade. So the most obvious thing that you can tell is the window, the window cut on the blade, which is a design that comes from the 0999. Next, you're gonna have a spear point blade, which I love. I think this is my first spear point in my collection, but spear point, plain edge. It is. It does come in CPM 20 CV and it is stone washed. So beautiful finish to it. I really love it. It also comes with jimping on the spine right here where you would place your thumb. And it also has jimping on the flipper as well. In terms of handles, the handles are made out of bead blasted steel overlay with carbon fiber, which was something that was controversial when this knife came out because the 0999 had titanium instead of steel. So some people liked this design, some people hated it. I personally don't mind it. Next thing you're going to notice on the handles is the floating bridge, which was the biggest feature that I fell in love with on this knife. And keep in mind, I didn't know about the 0999 until after I purchased this knife, but the floating bridge on the spine is amazing. I thought it was such a cool feature. And again, reflects the same design as the 0999. And I like that ZT subtly put their name on the backspacer right here in all black, so it doesn't pop out as much. And the next thing I wanted to talk about was the clip itself, the pocket clip. So this is a stainless steel deep carry pocket clip and it has ZT's logo on it. This is also a reversible pocket clip. You can move it on this side as well. And it is only tip up, so keep that in mind guys. If you wanna purchase it and you're a tip up guy or tip down guy, um, it is only tip up. 
This knife also comes with what ZT calls their insert liner lock and also rides on KVT ball bearings, which is a really smooth action. And one thing to note, these screws are not recessed on the handles. Some people like that, some people don't. I personally don't care. It fit me just fine in my hands when I used it, so no complaints here. And the next thing I wanted to mention was that the pivot screw is gonna be a T8, while the rest of these screws are gonna be T6s. Another thing to note is that the steel screws, steel pivot nut, and the steel threaded tubes all come with black oxidized finishes, which is really nice. I haven't seen any wear or tear on them. Again, I've only used it once, but overall it's stayed in good shape. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was just do a quick comparison. So again, this is a small knife, so I'm gonna be comparing it to my Bug Out. And I'm also gonna be comparing it to my Protec TR5. So it's closer to the TR5 than it is the Bug Out in terms of size. And I'll also do a quick comparison with my 0801, which is a full-size knife and my 0562, which is also a full-size ZT. So, pretty big difference. That's the main reason I'm selling this knife, guys, is it's just too small for me to carry, and I don't use it. All right, guys, so I did want to talk about pros and cons. We'll go ahead and start with the cons first. So the first con that I did want to mention was the window cut on the blade itself. It's just not functional in terms of opening. I feel like the window cut is functional in the way that it makes the blade lighter, but that's about it. You can't use it to open the knife. I have been able to every now and then, but the amount of time I spend trying to open it with the window cut just takes too long. Easiest way is just to flip it. The next thing I did want to mention was this exposed detent hole right here. I just feel like that could potentially lead to a bunch of different issues in terms of that hole catching debris and preventing the knife from opening and closing properly. Was not a big fan of that exposed detent hole. Uh, the other thing I did want to mention too was, again, I'll try and post a picture of it, but there's a detent ball path right here that is also exposed and it just runs the same risk of that ball catching debris over time and just could lead to issues opening and closing. I haven't used this knife enough to have debris all over it and get into those nooks and crannies that I mentioned, but I feel like that could potentially be an issue down the road, so keep that in mind. The other thing I wanted to mention was the flipper. The flipper is really pointy, so it does dig into your finger when you go to open it. You can open it from the top and get a better grip with the jimping up here. That makes for a easier opening. But I wish that ZT had gone with the same design of the 0801 where it has a rounded flipper right here. So it's a rounded flipper compared to this guy, which is really pointy. And it also has jimping right here, which is really comfortable to just open right away. So, was not a big fan of the flipper. Also, when you open it, the same flipper just digs into my finger whenever I get a bigger purchase on it. So, it definitely digs in on my finger. I have large to extra large hands, so I feel like that's that's why I wasn't the biggest fan of that. So the next thing is not a con in my opinion, but because it's missing, I kind of put it in the cons category, but there's no lanyard loop. Now, me personally, I don't care. I don't use lanyards. I read in the comments that this hole right here on the pocket clip is used as a lanyard loop. So if you've done that, comment down below, let me know. I feel like this is just too thin of a surface area to use as a lanyard loop. I feel like if your lanyard gets caught on something and it pulls on this pocket clip, it I feel like it's just not gonna be strong enough to hold that. 
The last thing I wanted to note was the screws are not recessed. Again, this is something that I don't really care about, but I saw was mentioned in comments. When I'm holding this knife, I don't notice that the screws are recessed. It doesn't bug me at all. But aesthetically, I could see it being a con. Some people like recessed screws. I don't care. So if that's a con for you, it's a con. But for me, it wasn't. I just figured it was worth noting. All right, guys. So on to the pros. The first thing is this was a tribute knife to the 0999, which if you've seen the knife, I'm sure I've posted pictures of it hopefully at some point in this video. It's a beautiful knife, it's a big knife, and I wish that ZT would have made this the same size as that knife. The number one reason why I'm selling this knife is because I, it's too small for me. I don't like small knives, I don't like mini knives if you will. Uh, I'm a full size knife kind of guy. Again, I have big hands, so this just was not getting any use in my rotation of knives that I carry. The other pro to this knife that I thought was cool was there's a presentation side to this knife. So on one side, it's there's no logos, there's no wording anywhere on this side. All the markings are gonna be on the other side of the knife, which is pretty cool. So this could be the presentation side of the knife while you have all the logos on the other. And the other thing that I liked was that the detent on this guy is pretty light. So it's a smooth action, but it's also a firm action, if that makes sense. You really have to push on this flipper to open this knife. That's something that I can appreciate. I've had knives open in my pocket before and it's not fun. So for this to kind of have that security of having to really hit that flipper hard to open it is really nice in my opinion. And I love that you can see the layers of carbon fiber on the handles, so or on the grips I should say. When I was taking pictures of this knife, I'll post them as I'm talking about it, you could see the layers of carbon fiber all along the handles, which I thought was pretty cool. And the last pro, in my opinion, is this pocket clip. It is a true deep carry pocket clip, although it doesn't go over the full knife. You only have that much, you only have this much sticking out from your pocket, whereas my 0801, there's definitely a lot more meat sticking out of your pocket since the pocket clip is way down here because of the lanyard loop, so. Last thing guys, this thing is a ZT all around. Mentioned that, you know, ZT for a while now has kind of been going for a more subtle look and not as tough or overbuilt as they used to make them. And this knife is kind of right in the middle. It's a perfect balance between beauty and being overbuilt. I still feel like this is an overbuilt knife. It has 14 screws total, so anything that needs to be secured is secured on this knife, which makes me feel really comfortable and confident in carrying it. No blade play at all, side to side, front to back. It's pretty solid. I've only used it once, so only time will tell if that gets better or worse. And I also feel like it's a beautiful piece of art, and it's made in the USA. You can't really ask for much more than that. So. With that being said, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.